Today, we're going to build a Moravian stool. Moravia is a region in the Czech Republic, and Moravian woodworkers built a lot of furniture with the sliding dovetail joint. This is a clever bit of joinery that allows you to make solid furniture from thin planks of wood. It also looks cool, and it's not common in modern American furniture making. If you learn how to cut it, you'll have something different to add to your work. Once your stock is dimensioned, you can lay out the joint on the edge of the seat. The joint is pretty shallow. I'm cutting mine 3 eighths of an inch deep. The angle on either side is 15 degrees, and I'm just using a bevel gauge for that angle. After I lay out those angles, I'll run the layout across the bottom of the seat and cut the joint. Sawing the lines is much easier if you make a 15 degree angle guide and clamp it to the seat. Then you can just rest the plate of your saw against that guide and slowly work down to depth. Now, I'm only giving you a quick explanation of this joint because I already did an entire video just on cutting the sliding dovetail, and it covers everything in way more detail. We'll put a link to that down in the description. Once I have the slots cut, I need to make the matching dovetails in the battens. I can cut these most of the way with a standard rabbit plane or philister plane, and then I'm just going to tune that joint up with a scratch stock. This is a simple, shop-made tool that you can knock together from things you already have around the workshop. It works on a scraping action and takes a very fine shaving, so it's the perfect tool for cleaning up joints and details. Our sliding dovetail video has all the details on making your own scratch stock, so we're not going to cover it here. Now, I've got those dovetails fitted and they slide right into place with just enough friction for a solid connection. There's no glue in this joint, and my seat is done. Good news, once the seat is done, you pretty much just add legs and you're finished. But the legs are a really big part of the design. Now, most Moravian stools look like this, and they have spindly, tapered legs. And I like that look, but it doesn't really fit in with my house or the rest of my furniture. I want something a little bit different. So as I was browsing through Moravian stools, I found this one. And I think whoever built this stool was a genius because all they did was take that tapered leg and flip it so the thick part is toward the bottom. It makes the whole stool look so much more solid and grounded. I think it's really great and it really fits in with the old style American furniture I usually built. So I'm gonna copy that. First, I made 10 leg blanks out of three quarter inch stock. Most people can get three quarter inch wood, so you don't have to worry about finding thick stock. To get a good glue up, dress one face flat with a finely set plane and make sure you have two faces that meet without gaps. As you finish each pair, draw a triangle across the edges. This will keep your pairs together and in the correct orientation. For the glue up, keep the glue thin and use three clamps. That should be plenty. Once the glue dried, I dressed all my leg blanks down to one and five eighths inches square, and now I'm going to lay out the joinery and the taper. This layout could be complicated, but I've got a system that makes it easy. I'm going to find the center of one end by connecting the corners. Then I'll put the tip of my drill bit right in the center and drill until the bit just touches that end grain and gives me a nice clear circle. Finally, I'll make a square that touches that circle on all four sides. This is the whole layout. That circle is the tenon that's going into the seat, and everything outside the square is going to get trimmed off to make the tapers. Here's the leg ready to be tapered. I'm going to take one of my layout lines and connect it to the corner at the opposite end. That's going to give me a nice gradual taper. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side and flip the leg to the opposite face and do the same thing, connecting the line to the far corner. If this is confusing, we give you all the details in the plans. Anyway, now I can taper. This is a lot of material to plane off, especially in oak, but working smart will make it fast. I'm using my aggressive four plane, starting on one edge and working all the way down to my layout line. Then I'll do the opposite side until I'm left with just a triangle of waste in the middle. That last bit is easy to plane away and I can finish up with a finely set jack plane. Then I'll flip the piece and do the opposite face. 
Once I have two faces done, I need to draw the tapering lines back on and do the last two faces. It's the same thing. Connect the lines to the corners and plane away the waist. Tapering these legs by hand is easier than you think. If you have a bandsaw, feel free to use that, but a good hand plane will get it done. Here's the finished stool, and you can see that I did octagonal legs, and I made them with alternating narrow and wide faces. This gives the legs a little bit more visual interest, and it's easy to do. Here's my tapered leg, and I've added some lines to make the octagon. This would be awkward in the vise, so I've made a little V-block from scrap and lined it with rubber mat. I put the block under the back end and hold the front with my planing stop and the corner of the leg is up in the air where I can easily plane it off. Because the piece is held loosely, it's easy to rotate it to each new corner and keep working. I learned this trick from Peter Follinsby. He's one of my favorite woodworkers, and I'll link to his channel down in the description. Now the leg is fully shaped, and I've got a narrow end where the tenon will go, and a gradual taper down to the foot that will sit on the floor. Now I need to cut that tenon. There's actually two parts to this joint. The actual tenon is just a smooth cylinder that goes straight into the seat, but underneath that tenon, there's also a tapered section, and that taper is really important. As people sit on the stool, their weight is gonna drive these legs further up into the seat, and that tapered section is gonna wedge the legs more and more tightly in those mortises. Without the taper, the legs would eventually get loose and fall out. You can cut your tenons at the bench, but it's much easier if you have a shave horse. You can see I'm sitting comfortably with the work centered on my body. I'm holding the work with my legs and my hands are free. We have a great set of plans for making your own shave horse and we'll have a special deal on those plans at the end of this video. Now, I'm cutting the joint on the narrow end of this leg, so there isn't much material to remove. The biggest danger is removing too much stock and ending up with a loose joint. To test my joint, I've drilled a hole in a piece of hardwood. Right now, it doesn't even fit over the end of my tenon. So I'll work it a bit more and also chamfer the end with a file. That helps it slide into the test hole. Here, you can see me rotating the leg in the hole. This gives me a nice sharp line. Everything behind that line is still too thick and needs to be shaved. Another great tool for this work is the Spoonmaker's Draw Knife from Tools for Working Wood. I don't use this tool very often, but it's so small and doesn't take up any space, so I love having it in the tool chest for odd jobs. Here's a good view of me finishing the joint. It goes partway into the test hole and I'm rotating it. This leaves shiny, burnished wood where the tenon fits tightly into the hole. That part is done and I need to stay away from it. To take off the last bit of wood and blend the taper and tenon together, I'm going to use a card scraper and I'll stick with this tool until a full two inches of the tenon fits in the test hole. I did two of these joints on the shave horse, and that's easy enough if you don't have a lathe, but I do have a lathe, and it's much faster and easier, so I use that for the second two. The tenon is just a straight cylinder, so that's easy. Now, I'm doing the taper, and I'm going very slowly. You need a smooth transition from tenon to taper, and it's easy to take off too much material. But after a few light cuts, I've got it. This joint is done. And you might have noticed that I actually made five leg blanks. And I did that because I really thought I was gonna screw one of them up. And I did. I totally screwed this one up. So make extra legs. I'm ready to assemble, but there's a key step that a lot of people miss, clean up. I'm going to knock everything apart and finish all my surfaces. The point here is to avoid marking up the piece. So I'm padding everything, and then I'm planing all my surfaces, chamfering all my edges, making my details crisp, and trimming off all my sharp corners. A stool like this is going to be handled a lot. It has to feel nice. Like a lot of chairs, this Moravian stool has the legs at compound angles. So each leg is kicked out at 15 degrees, and then they're rotated 45 degrees off of 90. And that sounds very complicated and intimidating, but I promise it's not that hard. So I'm going to find my leg locations and then use a speed square to run a 45 degree line through each location and onto the bottom of the seat. Then I'll put my bevel gauge, still set at 15 degrees, right on that 45 degree line. And I like to use this little square from DFM Toolworks to line it up. It's the perfect tool for this job. 
Now, I can't have my drill bit breaking out on the far side, so I'm clamping on a bit of scrap. Drilling is straightforward. With a Forstner bit like this, you start straight up and down, and then, when your hole is established, slowly angle the bit until it matches the line on the seat and the bevel gauge. Then you just drill all the way through. It seems difficult until you do it the first time, and then it's easy. The most important thing is to keep the bit spinning as you drill through the far side. That gives you a clean exit hole. When you're drilling leg holes for a chair, you really want a long drill bit because then it's much easier to see what angle your drill is at. It's actually crucial. So if you want to use a brace with a traditional auger bit, they're nice and long. That's perfect. If you'd rather use a power drill, uh, spade bits can work. They're a nice length, but they don't always leave a super clean hole. Uh, I really like to use Forstner bits in my cordless drill, and these are really clean and leave a nice sharp hole, but they're too short. So on a total whim, I just went to Amazon and put the words Forstner bit extender into Amazon. And swear to God, this was the first thing that came back. It's like an eight inch long adapter that just makes your Forstner bit longer. Uh, it fit this bit really perfectly, a little too perfectly. I couldn't quite get it in. So I just took the shank of this bit and just kind of rolled it on a diamond plate, a fine diamond plate, just for a couple minutes. And then it slid in so well that I think I'm probably not going to take it back out again. I think I'm just going to leave it in here permanently. And this is just going to be my chair making bit from here on. Now we just need to install the legs. I lost a bit of footage here. So here's me doing it on Instagram. I already put glue on the leg and tapped it into the mortise. Now I'm just brushing a little glue onto this walnut wedge and gently tapping that into a slit I sawed in the tenon. The important thing here is that the wedge is perpendicular to the grain. You just tap it in until it stops moving and you're done. Once the glue is dry, you can flush cut those tenons. We're almost done, but we still have to cut that handle in the seat. I probably should have done that before I installed the legs. But so what? I'm doing it now. I drilled four holes, and now I'm chiseling out the waste between them. Back at the bench, I finish the inside with a rasp and sandpaper. Leveling the stool is easy. I've got it up on my bench, and I put some wedges and scrap under the uneven legs. I mess with it until it's level in both directions, just using a cheap plastic level. I want to trim those legs flat and also get rid of about an inch and three quarters in length. So I made a block one and three quarter inches high and glued a pencil to it. I keep that block flat against my bench top while I scribe a line all the way around each leg. Having octagonal legs actually makes it easier because you're drawing lines on a flat surface. When I'm done, I saw the lines I just drew and the stool is level. The Moravian stool is kind of a tricky build, and it involves some new skills you might not have yet. But it's also really worth it. Once you've mastered the sliding dovetail, you can do a lot of new things. You can build very solid furniture from very thin planks of wood. I used three quarter, but I could have used five eighths, and this thing still would have held together. Five eighths is usually way too thin for something like a seat that's gonna hold a full size adult. Once you've got the sliding dovetail figured out, there's all sorts of things you can do. You can also adapt it to bigger and more complex pieces like tables and desks. There are a ton of options. Now, we have a great set of plans for this. They're really comprehensive and always affordably priced. And we know that you might want to get the shave horse that we featured in this video. So we're going to do a special deal. Buy the plans for the Moravian stool and we will throw in the shave horse for a buck. We usually charge $10 for the shave horse, but if you buy it with the Moravian stool, you get $9 off. It's really easy. Go to rexkruger.com slash store or click on the link down in the description. Put the stool and the shave horse in your cart. We put them right next to each other on the store page, so it's really easy. And then put in the discount code SHAVESTOOL, and you will instantly get $9 off your order. It's just our little way of saying thanks. We really appreciate your support. I also want to give a big shout out to Chris Schwartz, who wrote the original popular woodworking article about Moravian stools that brought them to my attention. I would never have made this project without Chris's excellent article. Patreon.com slash Rex Kruger for people who support these videos. I mean, look, there's a reason there aren't a ton of people on YouTube building stuff like this, because these projects aren't, they aren't super popular. You know, it's, it's, it's not like making a river table where lots of people are going to watch that. I'm not going to get a million views on this video, 
which is completely okay with me. I don't need to get a lot of views on this video because I have patrons. They provide the support that lets me go where I want to go, do the artistic things I want to do, bring back old skills, go down weird pathways. I have their support, so I don't have to worry about getting a million views every time I put out a video. And in return, I give them a lot of rewards. Patrons get the Moravian stool plans for free. They already got the shave horse plans for free. They get all of my plans for free. They get a great community. They get all sorts of other rewards. If you'd like to be one of the people who makes these videos possible, go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out all the things we do for our patrons. And for everybody who's watching, you don't have to be a patron to have my gratitude. Thanks so much just for watching. We'll see you soon.